So why would someone get heart palpitations after they eat? Let's talk about that. First of all, what is a palpitation? It's a skip beat. It could be an extra beat as well. You also have PVCs and PACs. This stands for premature ventricular contractions or premature atrial contractions. You don't need to know that. All you need to know is both of these are extra abnormal beats that can occur. A palpitation is an irregular heart beat. It's a sensation that you feel in the chest area like a flip-flop or something that starts and stops. And it has to do with your uh, heart pacemaker. It's called a cardiac pacemaker. A pacemaker is a group of cells that are automatically programmed to keep the heart in rhythm. An average person at rest normally has a, a heartbeat of 70, 70 beats per minute. And what's happening is you're getting this uh, rhythmic electrical impulse that causes the heart to contract, which pushes the blood through the lungs to get oxygen, carries it through the body, gives oxygen to the cells, which comes back through the other side of the heart, and the whole cycle starts over again. At the cellular level, you're getting this exchange with different electrolytes, okay, which are electrically charged minerals like potassium and sodium and magnesium and chloride and calcium. And you have these little tiny pumps that are made out of protein that are pumping in and out of the cells at a very, very fast rate, like a thousand per second, these different electrolytes. And what causes the electrolytes to travel are the difference in electrical charge, the difference in pH and the difference in concentration of certain uh, minerals. And on top of that, you have uh, a part of the nervous system called the autonomic nervous system. So it's a bit complex. So let's just get into what causes palpitations. And by the way, palpitations, skip heartbeats are a precursor for a more serious problem like atrial fibrillation, and other more advanced problems with the rhythm of the heartbeat. But let's get into the main causes and the ones that are more common than others. The big one is digestion. When I was in practice, there were so many people that came in with palpitations and digestive problems. And I'm talking about heartburn, acid reflux, GERD, and gallbladder issues. Uh, and that could be burping, belching, bloating, gallstones, a uh, sludge in the gallbladder. And a lot of those cases had palpitations. So what is the connection? Well, we don't exactly know, but it's probably the pressure that's occurring inside the bile ducts. And a lot of times when you have a gallbladder problem, you have a buildup of pressure somewhere in the tubes between the liver and the gallbladder or the liver and the small intestine. And when that pressure builds up, it can create a lot of soft tissue guarding and tension and spasm around the area. And because the bile ducts and the gallbladder are so closely connected to the cardiovascular system, that pressure can then affect the heart and cause these palpitations. I'm gonna talk about what to do about that in a little bit, but let's go to number two, low potassium. This is probably one of the top causes as well. Why? Because potassium is the main electrolyte that controls the pacemaker. And if you're low in potassium, the risks go up for you getting palpitations and other problems, even atrial fibrillation, which is a more advanced version of that. Number three, let's say your pH is too alkaline. And when I'm talking about alkaline, I'm talking about when the pH goes higher, okay? The lower you get, the more acidic things are. If the blood pH, which normally should be between seven, 0.35 and 7.45 goes above 7.45, even a little bit, your body is now excessively alkaline. It's called alkalosis. If that occurs, the minerals, specifically potassium, doesn't move that well through the body, through the heart. So if your pH is too alkaline, that could be the cause. Number four, caffeine. Too much caffeine can cause this problem. Uh, too much alcohol, a hyperthyroid condition. I'm not going to focus on these right here. I want to focus on these two right here, which are the more common. Let's take a look at that right now. All right, so if you have digestive problems, whether bloating, heartburn, GERD, acid reflux, I put some links down below so you can get a lot more information on what to do about it. 
But the simple thing to do would be to start doing intermittent fasting. For those of you that are new to my channel, I put a link down below. If you're not new to my channel, you know what intermittent fasting is because that is the most powerful thing that you can do to take the pressure off the digestive system and let the digestive system actually reset and heal, especially the gallbladder. You also need to avoid refined carbohydrates and vegetable oils like in soy oil and corn oil. These two types of so-called foods are very, very hard on the gallbladder and the stomach, and they're highly associated with causing that pressure buildup in those tubes. Simple thing to do would be do healthy keto. I'll put a link down below for those of you that don't know what that is. That will help the digestion and that will decrease the risk of getting these uh, palpitations. All right, number two, alkalinity. If you have low potassium, that could be the cause of your body being too alkaline. If you have high cortisol, if you're too stressed out, that could be the reason why your body is too alkaline. I know a lot of people are trying to alkalize the body because they think they're too acid, and that might be the case, but there's also another problem of being too alkaline, and that will affect the minerals, especially potassium. I put a link down below if you're confused on that so you can understand pH. Also, low hydrochloric acid, okay, like in your stomach, that can create a, a problem with your pH as well, in which case you want to start consuming apple cider vinegar somewhere through the diet. If you do a combination of healthy keto, like I'm recommending for this, I always recommend apple cider vinegar with that program. Uh, so you should kill two birds with one stone. Next thing, and this is very, very common, you just have low potassium. That's gonna set you up for this problem. Now, why are you low in potassium? Maybe you're on a diuretic because you have high blood pressure. Well, guess what? There's three things that cause high blood pressure. One would be low potassium. So in other words, the low potassium is causing the high blood pressure, which causes you to take a diuretic, which depletes your potassium. You see the problem there? Also, if you're low in vitamin D, which a lot of people are, that can cause hypertension and deplete your potassium reserves. And if you have high insulin, which the majority of the population has, or you have insulin resistance, or you're pre-diabetic, that can cause a depletion of potassium. Diarrhea that can also deplete your potassium levels as well as other electrolytes. If you're on any acids, that can cause low potassium because it takes a very strong acid stomach to absorb these minerals, thus the apple cider vinegar in your diet. And lastly, let's say you're just not consuming enough dietary potassium. This is very common. Why? Because you don't consume enough vegetables. It takes seven to 10 cups of vegetables to get close to your daily amount of potassium that your body needs. So you need to up these. If you're having a hard time with this, I put a link down below of an electrolyte powder that may help you as well. All right, there you have it. The actual causes of palpitations after you eat and when you're not eating as well. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.